Over 100 years ago in 1914, a former U.S. postal carrier, John Hittlewaddle Sr., purchased a 34-acre parcel of land right here to the left, and he opened up what was to become one of the best restaurant institutions in central New York, Hinnerwaddle's Grove. People came here for 104 seasons, over 100 years, for their famous clam bakes and salt potatoes. The business closed in 2018. They continued to make their famous salt potatoes, which were sold in stores off of farmland over here. But then, due to family deaths and no one else to pass the business on to, it closed for good in 2020. You can see the sign behind me. The family is now liquidating the estate. We're going to go to the home of the famous Hinnerwaddles and we're going to see what sorts of treasures lie inside. So before we head off to the state, I just wanted to capture the sign and the rest of the buildings because this is all scheduled at some point for rezoning and redevelopment. So at one point it will no longer be here and I just wanted to capture this for those who are nostalgic for Hinnerwattles. All right, folks, here we are. It's the big day, Saturday morning. It's about an hour and 45 minutes before the sale. Uh, we're gonna head over there so we can get a spot in line. So let's get moving. And that all the way back there is how far back it goes to sign up by that white truck all the way at the end to the left, it's crazy it's game time it's starting to snow i love estate sales in the snow this is just so much fun there is a buzz about this sale uh, you can just feel it in the air and um i'm just real excited about this one so All right, well, I just got out after being in there for the first wave and I absolutely hit the mother load of trains. All right, here we go. This is round one. So you could see there's a bunch of the LGB trains in here. I mean, it go all the way down the box. We've got a lot of transformers and this is really where a ton of the money is, is in these transformers. A lot of them are in box, some are not. I tested every single one of them out. And then we've got more. Wait till you see what's inside the boxes. Like some of them are still in the original cardboard. I mean, there's lots of ones that are like uh, petroleum and gas companies. So sweet. So um, let's go in for round two. I've got another box here ready. So let's try to fill this one up. All right, well, I just got done with round two. I can't wait to show you what I got. I mean, we've got a full truckload here. I mean, this is amazing. So. Uh, this is just one piece. I'll show you more of it when we get back to Primetime Treasure Headquarters, but just check this out. $5, this awesome paper mache piece. It is so cool. Jamaican taxi, really sweet. Look at those bright colors and everything. Oh my gosh, what deals today. Um, let me turn the camera around. I'll show you something else. So if you like model sets, wait until you see this in more detail. Absolutely incredible from the U.S. Navy. Um, wait till you see what is inside of this. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to open this up for you. And there's so many other incredible goodies in here. So, boy, let's get this back to PTHQ. All right, here we are. And this is just a fraction of what I wound up getting at this estate sale. I mean, we loaded up. Now, there are going to be more trains that I'm going to show you. But if trains is not your thing, I am going to be showing some non-train items as well, so just hold on for that or fast forward the video a little bit. Now, you might be wondering why I am not showing you inside of the house. That's because this is one of the two local estate sale companies that does not allow filming inside. But I did save some pictures of what it looked like inside the house from publicly posted photos of the sale on multiple websites. And one of the things that I noticed towards the end of the photos, and it took a while to get there because there were over a hundred photos posted to these multiple sites, were pictures of trains. And my eyes lit up when I saw this picture 
and when I saw this picture. Because if you remember back to my picking under pressure video, I loaded up that day with LGB trains. And people sometimes pass those up because they're not Lionel trains. But LGB, there's a lot of money in LGB. So I couldn't wait to get there. And I was even extra excited when they let people into the house and the opening door led you right through the garage, which is where all of these trains were located. And the reason why that is a good thing psychologically, remember, I am a psychologist. I work as a neuropsychologist on the side, so I like to study human psychology and how I could use it to my advantage when I go to these sales. Is there is a phenomenon that I have noticed that when people go to these sales, they automatically zip through the first room and oftentimes the second room also because they seem to think that you have to travel far to get to the treasure, like it must be laying deep within somehow. But that is not always the case. So sometimes you might just walk right in and all of the treasure is right there in front of you. And that's what happened here. Now, I actually confirmed that by talking to the state sale dealers. And they were telling me, yeah, we notice this all the time. People walk through the first one or two rooms on a reliable basis. Now, when I got in, there was one other dealer that had taken down some of the trains for himself. So I knew that I had to move fast because there's a lot of competition and other dealers available. So uh, I started grabbing things. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just take some of these items down. I'm gonna show them to you. I'm gonna flash up some comps on the screen and, um, and we'll just take it from there. All right, so we're gonna start with this one here. This is actually my favorite one. Let me know what your favorite one is in the comments once you see it. Now, uh, you can see a lot of them come with these cardboard uh, protective sleeves, which is an added selling point. But look at this one, the Florida Boy Orange Train. Look how big this is. You could see here it had a price sticker back in the day of $98. Um, the comps on eBay sold price of $107. That includes shipping. That is not bad. Now keep in mind with the uh, estimates that I'm going to give you for comps. They're just that. They're estimates. They do include the shipping price. So the final sale might be around that same price. It could be more than that or it could be less than that. Again, these are just estimates. Another thing to point out if you're paying really close attention, you're going to see stickers on here. These white stickers. Now you can see it says $45. Keep in mind that is not the price. The price is half of the sticker and actually got a little bit more of a deal since we did a uh, bulk on these. So um, the reason why it's half off the sticker on the first day is that they previously, this guy had so many trains at one point that they had a prior sale at some point, which was just trains. So this is stuff that didn't sell during that sale. Um, and now it's 50%. Uh, off and again got a little bit of an extra deal so let's go to some more uh let's go to 4131 so i have uh two of these this one here is the uh lowenbrow train look at that that is sweet so that is number one and then we have number two a second one and this is smaller so it'll be uh, easier uh, shipping wise on that one so we got uh, two of those and these bad boys go for 75 bucks a piece now i'll be giving you a total price at the end for what i paid for everything on the first day uh, so let's go to the next one all right now we have two of these uh, one without the sleeve and one with it these are the mercedes-benz now keep in mind the lgb trains are made in west germany it actually says that uh, on the side uh, of the box here. So this is a really nice one. These go for uh, about $120. Uh, here's the other one uh, right here. So really, really sweet. Excited to have uh, both of these, two of them. I couldn't believe it. All right, there's some more alcohol and Brurania ones. Check out this bad boy right here. This is the Miller High Life Train. Check that out. That thing is huge. This one goes for about 82 bucks. All right, so we have another Brurania one down here on the bottom. Let's dig this bad boy out and see what we've got. We have got, oh, I love this one. Where's my Bex fans? Check this out. 
bags of beer. This one goes for about $87. All right, I know, I know, you're wondering what this one shows right here. What is in this one? Well, this one here, love this one, check it out. This is the Dutch blue car. This one goes for about 68 bucks. All right, now I know what you really wanna see. You really wanna see what's in that Lionel box right on the bottom. So we're gonna work our way uh, down to that one. Uh, let's start up here with this Lionel. Lackawanna train. I always like saying Lackawanna. Lackawanna, Lackawanna, Lackawanna. So this one goes for about 40 bucks. Then we've got the Lionel Illuminated Bud Car, and this is an Amtrak one. So that's always a bonus when you can get Lionel combined with Amtrak. They always sell really well. That one goes for about 60. And then we have got this bad boy right over here. So uh, let's take a look at what we have here. Oh my gosh. I could show you the side, but I think I'm going to tease you a little bit. So let's open this up. Ba, ba, ba. We'll slide it out. Mm, boy, what do we got here? What do we got here? We got a Union Pacific, folks. This is a Union Pacific Dash. Check this out. Look at this bad boy. Wow. This one goes for about $170. So I was just so pumped up to be able to get this. So um, that's not it. We've got more. Let's take a look at what's over here. All right, so we talked about LGB, we talked about Lionel, but there's another line of trains to look for. It actually has the name Line in it, and that is K-Line. And there are some nice gems within K-Line. This one jumped out to me when I saw it because hidden in this top corner is the Shell logo. And people love the Shell logo for advertising items, especially trains, because this is a tank car. So it makes perfect sense to have that Shell logo on it. 48 bucks about approximately for this one. And I've got one, two, and three. Ah, 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 ah. Channeling my count from the Sesame Street cartoon. And I am very excited. And we have more K lines to look at. All right, now check out this one here. This is a Southern Pacific caboose. Now this did previously sell for $30, but I think I could probably get more out of it because there's not another one available right now. And the person who previously sold this did not use proper keyword terms. The person did say it was K-Line, but the person did not say that it was Southern Pacific and did not put the number on there, 6144. You definitely wanna make sure you include that stuff. Uh, you could see it here on the side of the box as well. All right, we're gonna go to what I think is a cooler Union Pacific train car. This is a hopper car. I like the yellow coloring and I like that it's in italics. It really pops well off of that burgundy background. Uh, there's not one of these available that has sold, but it's not like there was one sitting around that didn't sell. There just hasn't been one recently listed to go through a completed listing. Uh, there is one available right now for $47. So I think I could do well on these because I not only have one, but Wait. what, what is that? Do you hear that? Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? I was channeling my inner count before and here he is coming out and he's saying something behind the box. What, what, what is going? Uh-huh, huh. He wants me to do it more like the counts. He didn't think it was good enough. All right, you want me to, you want me to try again? <laughs> All right, he wants me to try again. Let's see what he says. All right, let's say, uh, let me try. All right, so we have one Union Pacific train car. Two Union Pacific train car. Three Union Pacific train car. Four beautiful K-Line electric. <laughs> I can't do this. Four beautiful K-Line Union Pacific electric train cars. Ah, 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 ah. How's that count? Is that good? All right, now if you're wondering what these little orange guys are over here, these are switch train signal control boxes. Now a lot of four of these recently sold for $116 on eBay. So not only do I have four of them, 
That's the third one. The count would be mad. I'm a little off on my count there. Uh, but this is number four. And there's number five. So I should be able to get over 100, maybe even over 125 bucks for these. All right, now when I first got there, what I grabbed first was actually not the trains. It was the transformers and the throttles. Number one, because they were easier for me to quickly grab and put inside my box. And number two, because there is really good profit margin on these, especially for the price that I got them for. So um, the way they have these packaged is a little bit confusing. And some people who are watching this who are really into trains might be able to put some comments in that can help me out a little bit with this because it's a little bit of an odd situation when I checked out comps on these things. So for example, for this throttle right here, um, this individually has sold for uh, between like 95 and uh, upwards to over a hundred dollars just for this. Now, sometimes the wire is attached and sometimes uh, not. Um, now you would think since this says 5007 on it, that that would be in this box over here. And actually it was, I, I took it out, but when I was looking at, at comps, one of the things that I saw is that you see this, it says 5006 and a 110 for the 110 volts. Um, sometimes I saw people listing this inside that box right over here, even though this is what is on the actual uh, cover. So it was, it was strange. Now, sometimes I saw people just selling this sometimes for you know, around 60 bucks or so, but then sometimes what I saw people doing is combining this with one of these, for example, and you know, combined prices on that would be well over a hundred dollars. So I actually took one of those and put it in here. Uh, I got to figure out exactly what to do. Every single one of those I plugged in and I tested at the sale and they all worked. So um, this actually, I found it loose, plugged it in, tested it and put it in here. And I've seen people do that uh, online. And this was actually in here and I took it out. So I've got to figure out what to do. Let me know in the comments uh, what you think. Uh, so I've got a bunch of these 5007 ones and these are light, those gray ones are heavy. So um, this is what's gonna be inside these ones. So I've got one, two, three, four, five of those. And then for the gray ones, I have one gray one in here. Then I have another gray one, that's two. I've got three, I've got four, I've got five, <laughs> and I've got six. <laughs> and lastly, for this first wave of trains, hang on, there's going to be more. Uh, we've got a driving current amplifier. Uh, this one, the 5009, and this one is sold for $55 with shipping. So we're going to now look at some of the non-train items that I got on the first day. And then we've got even more stuff coming after that. All right, now let's go over some of the non-train stuff, which ironically, some of these gems, I wound up getting in another room inside the house that had some trains on a top shelf, but I wasn't interested in them because they were loose. I'll show a picture of it here but there were some other gems hiding in that room. Now, keep in mind, these things were sitting here for a while that I'm going to show you. And this is probably the best of the gems. And I'm going to show you something here that's going to make you a lot of money if you follow this advice. When I see something like this, most people walk by it and think that it's worthless. When I see this, I think treasure. What is it? It's an old manila envelope. Now you see it says Walt Disney on this side. Now, why do people walk by it even though it says Walt Disney? Well, what happened most likely is that they opened it up and they saw that it had a $1 price on it and that it was a commemorative book of uh, Walt Disney World from 1971, which is the year that it first opened. Now, there's still plenty of these on the market and you could get one of these for a little over 10 bucks, but that's not what drew me to it. I always 
think that there are hidden things inside of these. And sure enough, one of the things that was poking out was this, which looked to me like a map. So I said, hmm, 1971 map, could it be? Take it out, look at it. And I was stunned to see this. <laughs> Wait till you see this if you've never seen one before. Oh my God, and I love Disney World. It's my favorite place to go, check it out. An original pristine 1971 Disney map opening year. Look at all this stuff. I mean, a lot of the things they don't even have there uh, that they have now. I mean, obviously, I mean, but it's just so cool. And you know, you see some of the things that are still uh, around. They still have the Jungle Cruise and stuff like that. Folks, this map sells for as high as $200 and many other repeated sales very close to that. This is a very valuable item hiding for a dollar right inside of here. My gosh, folks, again, I just want to emphasize and look at it. It looks dirty, right? It looks old, gross. That's another reason people just walk by this stuff. Oh my God, there's so many paper treasures that hide in something like this. So please, please do yourself a favor and look through these paper envelopes and stuff. Oh my God, so many examples over the years of those kind of treasures. Okay, now I'm gonna bring the picture of this room up again because in the room, and this is why I gotta look down at corners, and I'm gonna show you, you see down in the corner, I'll probably put an arrow to it, um, there is something kind of pressed to the side. It looked bright and colorful. You're looking at it right now, but it was on the ground. And I think that's a reason that just people left it there. It was just kind of just left there on the floor. It wasn't prominently displayed or anything. And I said, what the heck is this? I pulled it down from the ground like this. It was just like this, pulled it up. And I said, oh my goodness, look at this. This thing is gorgeous. Um, looks like a paper mache type of uh, item. This is definitely old it's definitely vintage bright and colorful and it says saint helene in multiple areas on it you could see it here too which i believe i referenced this at the sale i called it a jamaican taxi because you could see you know up here you know you've got all of the different colors that kind of look like something from jamaica so uh there is an area in jamaica called saint helena and I think that's what this is a reference to. Now, if someone else thinks something different, definitely let me know uh, in the comments. Or if you agree with that, you know, let me know in the comments as well. But I think that's what this is. Now, this is, from everything I could tell, a unique piece. I don't think there were many others made. Uh, I mean, this might be the only one. A uh, sticker price on it, only $5. You know... Something like this, I might just throw up there for $100 and see what happens, see if any offers come in or what. And, you know, I could always adjust the price over time. If you're unsure with a piece like this, start it high and then lower it over time if you need to. But I think this is a beautiful piece. Nice gem. All right. Now, I'm going to tease you for a moment. going to give you a little challenge here. Um, what the heck is this thing? What is that? I saw this sitting there and I said, hmm, it only has a dollar price tag on it. Might as well pick it up. It definitely looks vintage. The metal detector in me definitely wanted this. Actually, let me put this back up because it you know, looks nice while you're watching the rest of the video part. So, um, all right, pause right now if you want to put a guess as to what this is, if you think that you know, okay? Now, some of you, some of you hunters out there might know what this is. So this is an anchor weight for a dock goose decoy. Now, prices on these vary significantly. You could find some of these that sell for as high as 50 bucks, believe it or not. Now, I'm not saying we're gonna get that out of this. You know, it might only sell for 20, 25, but there is some potential with it. So it's pretty cool. The vintageness, I think, helps. And, um, you know, you really can't go wrong with something like this for a dollar. But this is why I say, sometimes boring, you know, items look like this, they look boring, um, but you know, they could have some value to it. So that's a good one. Um, all right, I always say to test these out. I have batteries with me, test these out. The Sony Walkmans, these things are great. Now this particular one, uh, this model here is WMF2065. It pretty much is known for always breaking. And um, you could usually only find it for parts for like 20 bucks. 
Um, but this one actually works. So I put the batteries in, tested it out. It does work. So normally if it works, you could get like double for it. So I'm hoping maybe I get around 40 bucks uh, for it. So uh, we'll see. Again, hard to find these working and it does have the mega base feature. Remember to remember the mega base feature back in the day. So uh, that's cool uh, to have that. Uh, let's see, check this out. Now this is this really cool Fez. It's a Shriner Fez. Um, now one of these has sold previously. Yes, I'm going to uh, uh, put the Fez on. Oh, um, your, your wish is my command. <laughs> what do you want me to do? All right. So you got three wishes. Now, um, one of these previously sold for, oh my gosh, I have it written down here. Oh, for about like 25 bucks. Uh, however, I can't believe I'm wearing this thing right now. Oh my God. I'm going to regret this. But anyway, um, you can, uh, right now, if you tried to find one on eBay, the cheapest that you could find one is for about $50. And there's only one available that looks like this one right here. So uh, I'm excited about this piece. Nice, bright, and colorful. Look for the fezes. Uh, so, um, you know, I'm going to probably list this for around that price. So that is cool. Remember, you know, the, the prior sales are guides, but that is not something you have to stick with. You also have to look at what is currently available and price accordingly. Um, this is something that I got for Mrs. Primetime because you know she likes um, jewelry, animal jewelry. I mean, it's not really jewelry, but it's like, um, you know, it's like a little belt. It's like a metal belt. So it clips on like this and it has these uh, lions on here. Check it out. And so I got this for uh, just $2. So this will probably show up in one of Mrs. Primetime's whatnot shows. If you didn't know, my wife, Mrs. Primetime, does now sell on whatnot. She's been doing it for a while. She does jewelry shows. Every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there's a link in the description section if you want to come check it out and follow us over there. And uh, yeah, you can actually talk to her. She talks on the screen. She doesn't show herself, but she does talk and you can interact with her and stuff. So that's cool. Um, now, these are cool right here. Check this out. These wood pieces. Now, this was in the garage, by the way. Uh, so just a buck a piece on this. And what I think that this is, is Hawaiian uh, koa wood. And prices on these types of pieces really vary significantly, but they do have some nice value. I'll put an example of some comps uh, on the screen there. You know, as you could see, they could go for some good money. Um, and as you could see in the back, it is marked Hawaiian. So I think it is uh, koa wood. It's really nice and strong. Um, so nice and solid. And often they did these kind of um, deep uh, leaf shaped uh, impressions with them. So uh, I'm pretty confident that's what this is. And I would sell these as a set, maybe for around 50 bucks or so. Not bad for $2. Um, this one I could not find a comp for, but it is a nice brand. Uh, this is the Donks uh, brand. I could not find this exact one. So we'll have to see. I'll do a little bit more research and see exactly where we want to price this one. But very happy. I like uh, nice uh, vintage kitchenware types of items. Uh, and I couldn't pass up on uh, stainless steel uh, silverware for just $1.50. So, you know, you, you can't miss with that. Um, some other things I picked up were some uh, Christmas ornaments. So these were nice and vintage right here. And total cost on them was uh, like a dollar for all three of them. So there you go. Three different Santas. So I'll probably list these around August, you know, for the Christmas season. That's when you'll, you'll start to see those types of items sell. Although Christmas does sell all year round, but that's when it'll sell best. Um, these two guys, uh, I'll probably just keep them for myself. Uh, maybe I'll list them. It would be better if there was four. Uh, it was a buck 25 for two, but they, they just have such a nice, cool feel to them. So, you know, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with those yet, but could beat the price. Now, I norm people always ask me if I get stuff for myself. Normally not, but I love to drink, and these are... Uh, I'm not talking about alcohol for a second though, um, but I do like, you know, drinking my Mountain Dew and iced tea and all sorts of stuff. And these are one of my favorite types of uh, glasses right here. Uh, and yes, it is glass. Um, the ones that have these divots inside and you could put your fingers inside and really get a nice grip kind of makes me feel like Fred Flintstone uh, with these. So I got an amber one and I got this one and they really just threw these in at the end for me. Uh, I, if anything, it might've been like a buck or something for, for both of them. So I'm really happy with those. So I got that for myself. 
Um, this doll, um, I'm not exactly sure where to comp it at. At first, I thought it was a matador, and it, maybe it is. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, it does say handmade in Spain. They made a lot of those types of dolls over there. Um, uh, but, you know, it, it, he doesn't like have like a cape or anything that he's holding. A lot of those matador dolls uh, have that. Um, so, you know, I, I got to look into it a little bit more and see what we could do with this. But, you know, maybe somewhere around $25, $30, uh, depending on what I find with my research. But let me know. Um, he's holding these two items here, which I'm not exactly sure uh, what those are. So, again, if you know, let me know uh, in the comment section. Uh, then, let's see. I could have passed this up. This was in the garage. So, uh, this is a pretty cool, like, wire wood item. Just 50 cents. Nice for... 4th of July. So, you know, it didn't have anything on the back on it that said like Hobby Lobby or something. Although, you know, who knows exactly where they got it from. But again, 50 cents. Uh, I didn't feel I could pass that up. Then this did look vintage. So um, I'm not going to put it in the refrigerator to scare Mrs. Primetime because uh, that's like a once every three year thing that I'm going to do. So it's going to be a while before I do it again. But check this out. It is definitely a little creepy looking. It is a straw doll. Uh, not something that um, you know, I could find any comps on or anything like that. It seems to be another handmade uh, type of item. So let me know where you would price this at. Uh, you know, I don't know. I got to do a little more research on it, but I couldn't pass it up for just two bucks. This was just hanging in the garage uh, when I walked in. And I looked ev over everything in the garage uh, after I uh, hunted and took down all those trains. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? I think we just have one more. Oh, two more things. This is from the family. This is a Hina Waddles, um, uh, courtesy bake, um, like travel mug type of thing, you know, an insulated mug. So, um, you know, I figured, you know, I don't know, maybe for a viewer who watches this, if you're interested, you want this, you're reminiscent of, uh, Hina Waddles, let me know. And, um, you know, I could, you know, give this to somebody uh, who's interested. So, uh, or I'll just list it, you know, on eBay at some point, but that, that's a cool item there. Uh, and by the way, the, the name, I normally don't drop the names, by the way, of the families in the uh, estate sales. However, this one, I did make an exception because it was publicly advertised. The name was publicly advertised to get people over there because everyone in the community knew the name. So that's why I'm comfortable uh, mentioning it here. Uh, let's see. Then the other thing was, and this is the last thing for now. Uh, this is the, um, a socket set. It's a 14 piece socket set. And this is through uh, proto. Uh, and you can see here, it's a 75th anniversary box. Now in terms of value on this, it's hard to say. Um, these have sold in like a 20 piece set. I saw one that sold for like 60 bucks. Now it does have some uh, rust on it, but don't let that scare you away because uh, these types of rust marks, you could do like a little test on it when you're there and you could just try to rub it off and you'll see like if you just scratch it with your finger, um, some of this will just wipe right off. So it's not you know necessarily permanent because there's some rust on it. So, you know, I'll just probably just try to clean it up a little bit. Like you could see there, I got a little bit of on my finger. Um, so I think I could clean that up and um, do nice with this. This was five bucks, as you could see here. All right, so the total price for everything came to $483. Very happy to keep that under $500. Remember, I should get a nice chunk of that back just from the Disney map. And who knows what will happen with this. So by the time I sell a lot of these things, um, you know, a lot of the train stuff will just be profit. And I think there's a lot of money to be made in the trains uh, and the transformers. Um, I did pay like 14 bucks with a credit card charge uh, because I did not know that they took check. And I do have a business checking account and I have my checkbook that I keep with me uh, for situations like this, but I just didn't realize that they took uh, a check. So that'll be helpful for future uh, reference because, you know, when I make a big purchase like that again and it's not cash, uh, then I could, you know, not have to worry about the credit card fee. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I'm not worried about it given, you know, the vast amount of stuff that we got and the value that's here. Hey, it's the next day and I couldn't help but wondering, what if I went back on the second day for the 50% off deals? What else would I find? Let's go and find out.
All right, so we're all signed up and I got number 21, which is much better than yesterday. So we should get in on the first wave. So now we just wait. Here we go, number 21, it's official. Well, there definitely are a lot of people here. It's about 10 minutes before the sale. So people are here for the discounts. I've got the boxes ready in the primetime treasure mobile. And as you can see, people are starting to line up. So let's get ready. All right, I actually just finished, loaded up with a bag of jewelry, a ton of more trains, a really cool carousel piece, and some really cool graphic t-shirts. So I gotta get back in there. I'm gonna get the car ready to load up and wait to see what I got. Here's a little teaser for everyone on one of the things I just picked up. Oh my gosh. So as you can see, it is an hour and 15 minutes after the sale began and there still is a line of people waiting to get in, but I'm just going to get in there, get all my stuff and bring it into the primetime treasure mobile. We are loading it up again. All right, this is just part of what I got on the second day. Now, as you can see, we have a lot more LGB trains. It's not gonna take that long to get through because all but one of these trains is actually the same train. And that's exactly why I waited for the second day because I wanted to see if I could get a bulk deal on them. Now, the one that is the bulk train is this one right here. Um, this is the only one that's not in a protective sheet for this particular train. It's the Pacemaker New York City Line train. This is a beautiful train. This train sells for as high as $80. So as you could imagine, I was salivating to try to get my hands on all of them. The issue was I thought on the second day that it would be 50% off of the trains because that was the deal that would be 50% off of everything the second day except for the furniture but I wasn't interested in the furniture so I get there early I get in line I get in one of the first people in head right over to the trains and just wanted to clarify is it 50% off the trains and I was told no it's not 50% off the trains because they already are 50% off and I'm saying hmm, that's going to be a problem because this is actually why I came this day was to try to get an additional deal. If that was the case, I could have just got it all yesterday. So fortunately, I am a regular customer and we started talking some more about the situation. And as you can see, in terms of the price on it, uh, they all have the same sticker price on. Let me pull it out this way for you. So they all have the price of 35 dollars on it so that would have brought it to 17.50 at the half off price so i'm thinking well maybe i could get them for about 10 bucks a train and so i threw that idea out there and she's looking at me and in my head i'm really thinking you know 200 dollars for all of these trains there's one more i haven't shown you yet would be a pretty good deal and she looked at me and she said how about 200 I said sold because the other one that was included is this one here. Check out this bad boy right here. I'm going to tease you a little bit. All right, here we go. It is the Denver Rio Grande LGB train. This bad boy sells for as high as $155. So super excited to snag that as one of the trains. So what I did, once we closed the deal, uh, we just put it to the side. Uh, we put a protective uh, tape around the area where this was all located and just marked it off as sold to me. And it was in an area where there were co-workers who were looking after it uh, from the state sale. And then I went and started looking at some other things. Now, one of the things I actually grabbed on the way in that I saw on the first day, and keep in mind, this is the first day everybody who walked into the house would have seen this because it literally was sitting right by the front door. But everyone was probably thinking what I was, which is I didn't want to pay $25 for it. I was hoping that I could get it on the second day for half price if it was still there. So as soon as I got there, I snagged it up. Yeah, we're talking about the horse. There's the price you can see, $25. This thing is super strong, super solid, clearly vintage, 
It is amazing. Now you might be wondering, how are you gonna ship this thing? Well, I have a box that is definitely big enough to ship this. I make sure I have those for situations like this. Uh, and I, I buy them in bulk on Amazon. Now, uh, on the back, we'll make this way easier to ship. And I just specify this in my listing. See this? This is, And I'll clean all this up and stuff. But this right here, this will come out. It's just a screw. <clears throat> this will come out as well. And then you just separate it and put it in the box. This way you don't have to worry about this getting in the way. It'll make it much easier to ship. Um, folks, I definitely need your opinion in the chat. What would you price this bad boy out? I mean, oh my God, this thing is amazing. When I tell you this thing is solid as a rock, I mean, it's incredible. Oh my gosh. So I did see there was someone who had something similar and not the same exact thing, a carousel type horse. Um, three hundred dollars. It looks like the person just accepted a bid for it. They might have put it up for that price on auction and just took it. But um, I I gotta do some research into this. I, I'm not sure. I don't want to underprice it, so uh, I'm gonna try to do a little more work on it, figure it out, and uh, you know, eventually get this get this listed. But <laughs> it's super cool. So I was very glad to be able to grab that. Now this was another bad boy I was excited for. This is the USS Missouri by Sterling. Now I'm gonna take this off of here. You see that I have rubber bands on it right now. That is my doing. It did not originally have rubber bands on it. And this is one of the reasons that I think it was sitting there because what happened is, and, and I'll show you this right here. It was laying like this and the box was partly separated and stuff was bulging out of the top of it but it does have the original instructions in it, the original assembly uh, instructions. And this box is just super cool. You don't even see this box anymore uh, when you ever see these for sale. Now, when you do see these for sale, and this was um, uh, help done with the assistance of the uh, US Navy, when these ever do come up, they sell for around $250 to $300. That's with the shipping, because you can imagine this is a big size box. Even if there are some pieces missing, someone will still purchase this who's into vintage military collectibles, because where else are, and how often are you gonna find something with this many intact pieces? I mean, if it's not complete, it's gotta be in the 90% complete mode. And then someone will just try to find those missing pieces or even maybe even construct them uh, just to, you know, retrofit it. So I was super excited. This was, by the way, uh, and there was no picture of it ahead of time, but it was in the basement area. There was a long corridor and you had to walk down the corridor. And when you walk down on a bottom shelf, that's where it was sitting. Another thing I'm super excited about is this. This was sitting on my way over. It's also in the basement and it was on my way over to getting this. So I picked up this first. I just saw it sitting here like this. This is how it looked, okay? Now, again, this is, it sort of reminds me of the Disney find. I mean, it's bigger, but again, it, it just looks boring to the average person. But for me, when I see this, my eyes light up because I'm like, there's probably treasure inside of this thing. Look at this. How often do you see a big giant, and as they turn around, looks like it's some kind of card or something. Check this out. Wait till you see, oh my God, wait till you see what's inside. So I'm gonna give you a little tease right now. You ready? Check it out. Look at that. This is sweet. Okay, hold on. Let's take this whole thing out here. Let's show you what we've got. Oh my gosh, right? Check it out. Hold on. All right, we don't want to damage it. Check it out. Look at this. We're gonna open it up some more. Boom. Here we go. Hold on. All right, there we go. Check it out. We got Santa Claus right here. Let's just move him right along with Rudolph, or I think it's Rudolph. Is it Rudolph? Yeah, it looks like it's Rudolph. So look at this thing. This is so cool. Amazing piece. Wow, I am just super excited. All right, so this was made by a company called Barker Greeting Card, and I have not been able to find anything like this of theirs in terms of any type of comp or listed item. So uh, as you can imagine, there's probably not too many of these things around and it's pretty clean. Uh, it looks like it was written out to good old uh, Betty Lou. See if you can see that there, but um, 
I don't think that's a big deal to someone who wants to get this to someone uh, for a gift. I mean, the art on it is beautiful. And things like this, here's another misconception. A lot of people think that things like this cost a lot of money to ship. Long, light items do not cost a lot. Even priority mail, you would be surprised, depending on where it goes in the US, often they will ship for less than $10. Yes, even for something this big. So that's why I never pass up on something like this. Now, that brings me to the last thing that I wound up getting, which were the shirts. All right, so in terms of the shirts, I loaded up on those right after I loaded up on all of the trains. Now, my per unit price on the trains was just $11 a train, and I was able to do that because I made that bulk negotiation deal on the second day. And that's one of the reasons you wanna go back on the second day is to make that bulk deal if you see something there that you think might be left over, has some value, might be priced a little too high on that first day, get in there that second day early, might be able to grab it and make a deal. Uh, the same was true for the t-shirts. The t-shirts were in the garage as well. I'll put some pictures up to show you what it looked like. You know, there were uh, a lot of them there, all different sizes, small, medium, large, extra large, double XL. Now, I was only interested in the double XL and in the XL shirts because my experience, and yes, I do sell uh, clothes as well, is that the XL and the double XLs sell the best. They will fit most people. Once you start getting into larges, mediums, smalls, extra smalls, it's usually a much longer haul to find someone who's going to want that type of shirt. So, Given that there were so many of them, I don't want to be stuck with a lot of inventory that's going to be tough to move. Now, as it is, it is somewhat of a risk because there is no comp available for this type of t-shirt. After all, all these t-shirts have been sitting in this garage for all this time, and there's not that many of uh, others of them around. There's no, no examples of any of that sold. So, I still, though, thought it was worth jumping in on them at the right price. Now, the first day they wanted $5 a shirt. I didn't want to be in them that much. I knew, given how many were there, there'd be some left over on the second day. So I just loaded up this box with all of these shirts that you see right here. There is a total of 31 shirts in here. So it was just a matter of negotiating a deal we talked about it. I'll tell you the price in just a moment, but uh, I'm wearing one of the shirts right now. You can see it right here. And the imagery of these shirts is one of the reasons that I think it is appealing. People love crabs, lobsters, sea creatures, that kind of thing. The back of the shirt is also cool. I'll show you right here. And if you want to get a close up of, of what it shows here, it's neat because it says that they've been in business for over a hundred years since 1914. You can see there for over a hundred years, it says New York on it, North Syracuse. So you got the Syracuse name on it. You know, front and back graphics is always a plus. And this one here is uh, a double uh, XL. So we've got that one. Uh, let's see what else do we have. We have this one here. I think this is my only long sleeve shirt that I have. So here's the front right there grabbing a beer and here's the back right there so that's pretty cool you got the clams and everything so that's neat uh let's see we have one of these so this is the only one that is in blue for anyone who likes a blue color that's my only one of those and then the rest of them are either this one or a lot of ones in black but i really like this check it out this is just a front, but it's a nice, big, bold graphic. Hinner Waddles, get your clam bake on. That is super cool. Look at that. You got the big corn stalk and everything. That's neat. And then this one here, which I think is cool. You got the clam on here. Check this out. I got shucked at Hinner Waddles. And then it says, shuck you. So anything like that, that kind of like imitate something profane, but it's not actually profane. Those are popular as well. People love to wear stuff like that. Uh, the clam's face is pretty funny on it. And again, it says Syracuse, New York. So, all right. So in terms of the total price here, you can see the trains are written out as a total of $200 on those. And then you can see here, it uh, has the price of the t-shirts for $60. And then 
it has the total price, because there's other things included in it as well, as $287.50. So I think I really made out. I mean, I can't even believe it. What am I gonna price the shirts at? I'll probably put them at somewhere between like 20 and 30 bucks a shirt and see what happens with it. I'll probably start on the higher end and then, you know, we'll see what happens with them. Now, I don't want to forget the jewelry, and this was paid for separately in the jewelry section downstairs. I did pick up a few wooden necklaces for uh, Mrs. Primetime and her jewelry side of our business. Uh, here's another necklace here, which has some nice symbols on it and some nice uh, shiny dangles on it as well. Uh, we always look for anything that has this uh, turquoise color to it. Uh, those are uh, very desirable. So we have the necklace here, and then we have the matching uh, brooch and earring set, and this uh, nice piece here, another uh, necklace with a pendant on it. And then I uh, thought about this for Valentine's Day. It's just a nice heart brooch, and then a few pins here as well. This is the one I like the most. It's from the Royal Order of Jesters. Great pin, hard to find jester items, and so glad to have this in the collection along with some of these others. The total price for all of this jewelry, it was all half off, and it came to $10.50. Overall, I can't be happier. Now, there was art that I was interested in, but the art was very, very large. Most of it was in glass frames, and it just wasn't the type of stuff that I could get in terms of eBay. Um, there was one smaller piece I was interested in. I'll put it up on the screen, but it wasn't available the second day. And that's one of those risks. They wanted 60 bucks for it. So I thought maybe I'd be able to get it for 30 on the second day. But that's a risk you take sometimes. If you wait to the second day, it might not be there. So you got to keep that in mind as well. So that's why you got to be happy with what you got on the first day. Like I would have been happy with just every day on the first day. All this stuff is extra bonus. All right, I hope that you enjoyed seeing the many treasures that I pulled out of the Hinnerwaddle estate. I will be sure to get these into the hands of collectors who will treasure them for many years to come. If you ever went to Hinnerwaddles, leave your memories down below in the comment section. I and many others would definitely love to see them. Uh, it has been an incredible start to 2023. I'm sorry it took so long for me to put this video together, but when they don't let you film at the sale, it is much more challenging to make this type of video, do all the setup and everything. I mean, it definitely is tough. So hopefully they will, at least hopefully these particular dealers will allow that to happen again at some point. Maybe put your comments down below to advocate for that. I know they watch the videos too. So, uh, cause I think I could do a better tribute to some of these families and estates. Cause we always try to do it in a very respectful way, um, you know, for the channel. And so, uh, who knows? We'll see what happens with that. If not, we have to just keep doing some, uh, creative workarounds like this. But, um, if you've never tried salt potatoes, by the way, definitely go and try some, uh, this is done here in honor of the Hinner Waddles. Uh, so go out, get them. You, they come with this big salt pack like this, and you put it in the water, you boil it up, you put the potatoes in, and then you soften them up, and you get some butter on top of it, and you put them in a small little dish. Now, usually it's like a paper dish here in Syracuse. Uh, it's a local staple, and um, they're absolutely incredible. So you, you got to try them. Shout out to Hinner Waddles. Thank you, everybody. I will see you at the next video. Take care.